Okay, so a bunch of people lately have asked me how to do screen recording inside AR apps. So I don't really have a good answer for that because I would never attempt to do that myself, but I always use NatCorder and NatMic on the Asset Store. They're both $100, but they're well worth it. Now, the one thing that may not be super trivial when using NatCorder is that you can pass it a particular Unity camera. So in all my AR apps, I end up having a dual camera setup with one camera that renders all the UI elements, whether they're on like screen space overlay or world space, and another camera that renders only the AR background and the AR objects that I want to show up in the recordings. So today we're gonna to go over using this dual camera setup and we're gonna use it to take a screenshot that will ignore all UI objects, all planes, all point clouds, and it will only render to the screenshot the default layer with the AR objects that you want to show and the AR camera background. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to github.com slash third dash Aurora and go to this AR foundation example and clone or download this if you don't already have it and open this up in Unity. So basically, if you haven't watched any of the other videos, this project just allows you to place a um, cube on the ground and then there's a UI toggle for toggling on and off the planes and the point clouds. So the first thing we're gonna do in here is go to file build settings and switch your platform to Android or iOS. Okay, once that's done, check development build and then go to player settings. And then to make our lives easier, we're gonna set this to portrait only. And I think that is the only thing we need to do in here. So let's go back to our main scene view here and go to scenes, open up the main scene. And the first thing that we're gonna do is get a second camera working because in all my AR apps, I end up using a second camera. And I don't think I've ever gone over doing this uh, in a video before. So. First of all, let's go to our AR camera. This is our main camera that we only want to render the AR camera background and anything on the default layer. So for calling mast, hit nothing and then uh, check default. And then let's tag it main camera because I think we're gonna use that to get a reference later. And then on this AR camera, right click and create a new camera which we're gonna call UI camera. This is gonna render all of our uh, UI elements in the uh, world space and then on the canvas space as well. So clear flag, set this to depth only. Calling mask, set it to nothing and then UI. And then depth, we're gonna set this to one because we want it to be over our AR camera layer. Okay, so that's cool. Now we have a UI element here which is our toggle for our AR planes and stuff, but we need some world space um, UI elements. So. What we're gonna do is instead of repositioning the same cube every time, we're going to instantiate a new cube each time we click on a plane or on the ground. And um, each cube is gonna have a couple buttons. So I think we're gonna make a change color button and a, maybe a destroy or a remove button or something like that. So on this content parent, let's create an empty game object and let's call it um, AR content, okay? Drag this cube as a child of the AR content so that it's sitting flat on the ground. So that looks good. Now, inside our AR content, we're gonna right click, create another uh, empty game object. We're gonna call this UI parent. Underneath here, we're gonna create another 3D object, which is gonna be a quad, and this is gonna be our button. So let's first rotate it by 180 degrees so we can see it, and then let's scale it by like 0.4 and 0.2. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. And then let's just move our whole UI parent up a little bit. And then for our quad, let's move it left, like, uh, or sorry, uh, yeah, like 0.2. And we're gonna call this button one. Yeah, maybe we should move that over more. 0.25, let's go 0.25. And then underneath this button, we're gonna create 3D object text mesh pro, import TMP essentials. Okay, cool. So this is gonna be our button text. And let's see, this is gigantic. So let's set the width all to ones. Let's go auto size, uh, change the mid to z min to zero, max to like a thousand. And then let's get the anchors correct, both in the center. And then let's move it out a tad in front of the quad here. And then to be safe, maybe we should set the default layer to like one. Okay, that looks good. It's scaled pretty messed up. So if we move it back out to this scope here, um, and then let's see, set the scale to one. That should be good. And then let's move it back as a child here. And then we can actually just change the width. So it's if we enable gizmos, 
you can see what we're changing here. We're changing like the text box size. So let's go to like you know, 0.35, that looks okay. And then this box, let's make it 0.1. Yeah, okay. Turn gizmos off to be able to see again. And that looks okay, whatever, we'll leave it for now. So the first button, let's make this change color. Change color, okay, cool. Looks good, but now I feel like it's too small. Height 0.15, okay, cool, that looks good. Now let's right click and duplicate this button one and we're gonna make a button two. And then we're gonna move this over negative 0.25 and then this button is gonna say, uh, I don't know, remove. That looks good. Let's lower the height maybe, fine. Whatever, that looks good. I think we're gonna go with that. Now the first script that we're gonna need is we need to be able to call a function from these buttons. So inside our scripts folder, let's create a new C-sharp script and let's just call this click handler. And we're just gonna make short little Unity script that'll allow us to um, uh, call a function when these buttons are pressed. Okay, so let's remove all this stuff here. Let's format it, remove these using directives. And then we're going to use uh, using Unity engine dot events. And then we're gonna have one event and that is going to be we're gonna serialize fields, so we expose it in the inspector, and it's going to be a Unity event called click event. Sure. And then we're gonna go on mouse up as button. And then when this object is clicked, we're going to invoke this uh, click event. So click event dot invoke. Cool. Looks good. Now on these buttons, let's just add that script. And then we don't really have a function to call yet, but let's leave that there. Uh, second thing that we're gonna want is we want this UI parent to rotate and look at the camera whenever we place it in AR. So let's right click and create another C sharp script. And we're just gonna call this look at. And so then inside here, we want, our, we want this object to look at the main camera. So let's create a uh, transform and we'll call it, I don't know. Main cam, sure, looks good. So then inside start, we can do main cam equals camera.main.transform. And then inside our update function, we're just gonna do transform.lookat um, main cam. Cool. So that should be all we need there. Let's remove these and then I hate having this crap. Okay, cool. So UI parent. Now we're gonna drag on our look at script and let's test this and make sure it works before we go any further here. So if we go into game view and we could click play, we should be able to move our AR content out here and then no matter what way it's rotated, the UI should look at it, yeah. So we're rotating the whole entire game object but as you can see, it looks like only the cube is being rotated. So that's exactly what we want. Cool, but why can't we see our text? Oh, it's white? Oh, right, of course. Okay, so then let's make our text color black. Okay, looks good. Now we need these buttons to actually do something. So for AR content, let's make another script and let's just call this, um, I don't know, content behavior. Okay, so let's remove all this crap. And then the first thing we're gonna want this to do is we're gonna wanna be able to remove it. So let's make a public uh, void and let's call it remove button down. And we can just do destroy game object. And that will destroy the whole entire thing because we're gonna put this script on the root object here. And then the second thing we're gonna need is public void and we'll call it, we'll make a change color function. Actually, let's be consistent, change color, button down. Cool. And then I guess we need a reference to the renderer of our cube, because we're gonna wanna just change the cube's button color. So let's go serialize field, and then um, renderer, let's call it rend. And then we can do color, color, but we wanna make, uh, we wanna make a random color actually. So let's do this. Let's go down here. 
and make a void um, get rand num and then actually not a void let's no we want it to return float so let's do random dot range and then when you construct the color in unity you can do it by like hsv values of zero between zero and one so we're going to return a number between 0f and 1f and I think that should be a yeah, float inclusive inclusive yeah okay so we just have to return this so that looks good so in our new color I think this takes three yeah you can just do RGB so let's do get random num comma get random num comma get random num Cool. So that gives us a random color, and then we can do rend.material.color equals this new color we made. Cool. So let's delete these using directives, and then this should be good for our content behavior. So on our AR content now, we want to put that script, and then we want to use that click handler we made to um, call those functions. So let's drag in our cube render, because that's what we want to change the color of. And then on our buttons here, our click event, we want to highlight both of those. Let's drag our script on. And then on the first button, we want to call uh, content behavior. This is going to be change color. Change color button down. Button two is going to be content behavior remove button down. OK, looks good. And now before I forget, what we're going to want to do is this cube, we want to make sure this is on the default layer, but our UI parent, everything under here, we want to set to the UI layer. So yes, change colors, or change all children, cool. That looks good. And then let's right click and create a folder. And let's call this prefabs. And we're going to put this whole thing inside our prefabs folder because we're going to instantiate this whole cube at runtime every time you press on the ground. So let's just test this and make sure that our buttons work, I guess. Let's go to the game view, click play. And then we can drag this thing out into view and we'll see if uh, any of this stuff is working. Change color, yeah. Changes it to a random color and then remove, destroys the game object, beautiful. Now there is one weird thing that we're gonna have to take care of here. So if we go to our content parent script and you look at this place content script, you're gonna notice that um, before we can place, the, uh, place an object, we have to do this check is click over UI. Well, this function currently is checking against this uh, graphic ray caster, which is on this canvas down here. And so it's only gonna get actual UI elements like this toggle here. So it'll work for the toggle, but now we need to get it to work for our AR content and our um, uh, new UI elements. So what we're gonna have to do is on both of our cameras here. The AR camera, we're gonna need a um, physics raycaster, I think. Yeah, physics raycaster. And then on the UI camera, we're going to need a physics raycaster as well, okay? And then back in this place content script, we need to be able to expose those. So well, I guess I didn't go with serialized field here, but whatever. Uh, so public physics raycaster. Physics Raycaster, well, actually let's change this to um, Raycaster Canvas. Let's change this to Raycaster UI. And then let's just duplicate this whole thing and change this to Raycaster AR. Cool. And then if we stick with what we've been doing, I like go back and forth between using serialized field and declaring them public. I think good practice is serialized field. So let's just keep with that convention here and make all of these serialized field. Now we're gonna to need to drag those references in again, but whatever. And then the last thing that we're gonna need is serialized field, uh, it's gonna be a game object, and we need our, I don't know, content prefab. Okay. All right, let's, all right, let's do everything we need to do first. So. The very first thing is instead of changing the position or rotation of our content parent, we're going to instantiate a new game object at that location. So instantiate content prefab, and we're gonna do that at the pose dot position first, 
and then at the pose dot rotation, and then we're going to put it under this transform. So let's remove that. So that takes care of that. And then Raycaster Canvas. So we want to do, now here's where we need to change this a little bit. So currently we're only doing this Raycast and getting results of the UI Canvas, but we want to do it with all of our different Raycasters. So let's uh, duplicate those, add our U uh, Raycaster UI and our AR Raycaster into here as well. And then that should be good. Let's drag in our references before we forget. Okay, so content prefab, we wanna to go to our prefabs folder and drag in that game object there. So that looks good. So Raycaster canvas, we're gonna drag in this graphic Raycaster from there. UI Raycaster is on our UI camera. AR Raycaster is on our AR camera. Cool. Uh, oh. So the only really weirdly confusing thing about this is um, currently we want to allow um, objects to be placed either on an AR plane or uh, on the ground where we don't hit anything. So um, here's where things get a little bit weird. So point cloud and um, default, AR, default AR plane, we want to change the layer to UI because we don't want those to show up in our screenshots. But we need to go back to our content parent here and we need to um, remove any Raycast results that have the plane in them because here we're doing this check is if click is not over UI, but we want to exclude the AR plane. So actually this default plane, we're going to tag it plane. And then here we can do results dot remove all. I think it's r dot game object dot tag. Yeah. And then we want to do if that equals plane, we're going to remove that from our list, remove any instance of that from our list. So that should allow us to ignore the clicks on the planes now. So good. Very good. Okay. So now before we can take a screenshot, we're going to want a screen to actually display our screenshot. So inside our canvas here, let's uh, create a UI image and let's call a uh, put it outside the scope here and let's just call this um, section media maybe and let's set this to stretch the whole uh, size of the screen change this all to zero so it should go the full size here and then underneath here we'll create another UI image and this is going to be our um, or you know what we actually want to do let's right click and create a UI raw image We want to make this a raw image and we're going to call this um, I don't know media we're gonna use a raw image because we, if, if you ever do wanna play video on the screen, you probably want it to be a raw image. So let's make this the full size of the screen as well. Let's just change the color to make sure it looks good. Yeah, okay, so cool. So we got our media image, that's gonna be our holder. The last thing we need is a UI button. We're gonna have a close button just so we can close this um, media section. Yeah, actually we could probably leave it there, anchor it to the top right, and then let's make it, I don't know, 150 by 100. And then let's get it in view here. Uh, maybe go 200, yeah, that looks good. And then the text under here, well, let's just keep it the default text and um, I'll just resize this. And then let's go 25, 25 everywhere. Oops, set some padding and then let's change it to close. And yeah, this is gonna be our close button, but now we need a script to be able to control this whole section here. So um, I guess I'm gonna to try to do this like I would be doing for like a normal app. So what I like to do is add a canvas group onto here. And then you can just like open and close a section by changing this alpha here and then modifying these interactable and block raycast values. This is good because it allows, instead of deactivating the screen, it allows the screen to be open in case it has to do stuff in the background on a script, for example. So the way I would typically do this is um, right click, create a C sharp script, script and we'll call it screen and we're gonna make like a base class for screens. This is assuming that your app is gonna have a ton of different screens that you're gonna open and close on the canvas um, in the same way. So we can delete all these functions. We can probably delete this here. And then um, our base screen class, we wanna do require component type of uh, canvas group. We wanna make sure it has a canvas group on it. And then we're going to just make a private member variable here, canvas group, call it canvas group. Okay, that looks good. 
And then inside the start function, we want to get a reference to this, but since it's going to be a base class, I think we want to do protected, no, protected virtual void start. That way we can override it in uh, another class if we have to. And then we'll just do canvas group equals get component canvas group. Cool. And then to make a function, um, protected void set screen, and then it's gonna take a bool, and that's gonna be whether it's open or closed. So if the screen is open, we want to, what do we wanna do? Canvas group dot interactable equals open. We wanna set that state, and then oh yeah, block raycast. Canvas group dot block raycast equals open. And we wanna set the alpha value according to this open value. So canvas group dot alpha equals open. And then if it's open, we wanna set it to one. If it's closed, we wanna set it to zero. So that should be pretty good there. And then we need to make another script. We're, this is gonna be our like media player script. So let's just call it, let's call it media player, I guess. I don't know. So let's open this up. And then this script is going to inherit from our screen class. And then, I hate that it adds those comments. I hate having to delete that stuff every time. But this is gonna be protect, damn it. protected override void start. And then we're probably gonna to wanna to do base.start. And then we wanna set in start, um, to close this screen. So set screen false. Because the I guess our media player we want it to default to off. Okay. So that looks good. And then we're gonna need a public void open screen. And this is gonna take a texture, which is gonna be our image texture. And then we'll make a public void close screen. And this is just gonna do, I guess we can just do set screen false to close it. And then actually, we should probably call that up here. And then open screen, what do we want this to do? Oh, so our media player is gonna have a raw image. So let's do serialized field um, raw image. And this is gonna be our media image, I guess. And so then, uh, when you open the screen, media image dot texture equals image text. And then open the screen. Set screen true. Okay. So I think that's all we need here. So let's put that on our section media. So media player script goes on there, raw image. We wanna drag in our media object there that had our raw image on it. And then our close button, uh, we wanna add a function to this and we wanna call uh, media player close screen. Yeah. And then I think that's all it needs there. Let's just turn it off for now. And then the last thing we actually need to do is the whole freaking point of this video, which was to take a screenshot. So let's create a new C sharp script. Let's just call it screenshot. And then let's put it on our AR camera. Yeah. Add component, screenshot, cool. So we can open this up and let's do what this whole video is about. <laughs> okay, so first thing we need to do in here is we need to call this um, on render image function. So on render image, Unity will fill out the rest for you. What this does is kind of like intercepts the render pass for this camera. So if we were to leave this here, our camera's not gonna render anything. So inside this function, you always have to have a graphics.blit, and that's gonna go from the source to the destination. So now, if we were to run this, basically you wouldn't notice anything different. Nothing is gonna happen, you won't notice anything, okay? But uh, what we wanna do here is take a picture. So let's make public void um, take screenshot. And then let's make a bool. Uh, let's call it take picture. That's gonna default to false. Inside take screenshot. We wanna set this to true. 
And so this on render image, I guess I forgot to say, it gets called uh, at the end of every like kind of render frame. So it's getting called constantly, every frame. So in here, we can then do something like if uh, take picture, then we can do the logic to save our screenshot. But first we want to set take picture to false. So it only gets called once. But inside here, what we're going to do is var temp um, rend and we're going to uh, render texture dot get temporary render texture get temporary and then we want to pass in the source width and the source height okay so we have our temporary render texture and now we need to blit that uh, blit our source render texture to this temporary render texture so source to temp rend cool now we need to create a texture 2D, which we're going to read everything into, and that's going to be our actual screenshot. So texture 2D, temp texture, yeah, it looks good, equals new texture 2D. We're going to pass in the source width and the source height. We need to give it a texture format. Why can't I type? Texture format, and that's going to be RGBA32. And then we're going to pass in zero for the mit maps. Oh no, sorry, this is false. False for mit maps, whatever the hell that is. I don't know. And then we're going to do um, temp text. And then we're going to read all the pixels. Oops, not temp rend. Temp texture. We're going to read all the pixels from a particular uh, rect, which is going to be the size of the screen. So actually, we need to do. Let's see. Rect, rect equals new, rect. It's going to be zero, zero is the origin. And then the width is height and height is going to be source.width and source.height. Okay, cool. So then inside this read pixels, we can pass in our rect. We can do zero, zero for the origin. And then what do they want? Recalculate mit maps. I'm going to go false, even though I don't, I don't fully know what that is. And then temp text apply. And then we can finally, um, oh, I guess, you know, what we need is a reference to our media viewer. So serialized field. What did we call that media player? Yeah. Media player. And then we can do media player dot open screen. We can pass in that temp text. Cool. And then the last thing we need to do is um, render texture dot release. And we need to release this temporary render texture that we created. So release temporary temp art temp rend. Cool. And so that should be all I need. And that should actually take our screenshot. Now, the last thing we need to do, I guess, is just create a button to be able to call this function. So let's go back to the game view here. And then underneath our canvas, let's right click and create a UI button. And let's make this like, I don't know, make it square 200 by 200, anchor it to the bottom. And then well, I'm not going to mess with the text right now, but actually that button's too big. Maybe 175, whatever, it looks fine. And then from here, we need to drag in our AR camera and then go to our screenshot script and call take screenshot. So now that should take our screenshot from only our AR camera, ignoring all UI elements. And then it should display it in our content view here. So let's test this out and make sure it works. So we take a picture. What did we do wrong? Oh, oops. Media player, we need to drag in our reference to our section media. Does that have all the references? Yeah. Okay. So now let's see if this works. Okay, so we take a picture and... Oh. We need to change the order of this. So this should be in front of everything. So when that screen opens... That canvas blocks everything. Okay, so nothing is showing up here, and that is because, let's close this, our AR content 
is not in front of the screen. So let's get our AR content in front of the screen and let's try this one more time. Take a picture and yes, all of our UI elements are ignored. And I noticed a couple things that I want to fix here. So first of all, this AR content, delete this one from the scene because we're gonna instantiate those anyway. We don't need it there. But on this AR content, um, the buttons are casting shadows, which I don't want them to do that. So on these buttons, we're going to go to, what is it, lighting, cast shadows, turn that to off. We don't really want them to receive shadows either. Okay, so that should be good there. And then there was one other thing. What the hell was it? Um, oh, oh, on this, what is it, content behavior? I think on start, I want the cubes to just choose a random color. So on start, let's just call change color button down. And then that way they'll all like instantiate with a different color so it'll look cooler. So now I believe we're good. So we can go to file, build settings, and let's go build and run, and let's check it out on the device. And scan the ground here, okay? And then we can place cubes. And you'll notice that, yeah, they change color when you place them. You can place cubes on the plane and off the plane. So that's kind of why we went through all that trouble with um, ray casting and all that crap, because you could, the easier way to do it would just be to check if a mouse click hits an AR plane only, and then place content there. But this makes it like, a little bit more flexible and then you'll see that these buttons like if you try to click a cube it won't place another one because the cubes blocking the click same with these buttons you can click the remove button or you can click this change color button and it doesn't actually place a new cube but it only clicks the button and changes the color of the cube okay and so now for the main event here you see all this ui crap in the scene all the point clouds all the planes but if you click uh, take a screenshot you'll notice that all that stuff is gone on your screenshot. So this particular dual camera setup is really good if you, for example, wanted to use, um, everyone always asks me about recording video and audio in a scene, like doing screen capture. NatCam and NatCorder are really good for that. They're both $100, so it's an expensive feature to add to your app, but um, they work perfect with a dual camera setup because uh, NatCorder, you can just pass it a camera to record from. So in our case, in this app, we would just pass it our AR camera and no matter what UI elements are on the scene, it's only gonna record what we want, which is our AR content and um, you know our camera background. So that's a really good thing to do. And uh, yeah, with that, I believe that's all I got for today. Oh, this other, it's really hard to hold the phone and film at the same time. But the other thing that this camera screen is really good for is like say in your app, you click take a screenshot. On this screen here with the screenshot, you probably wanna add like a share button and a, um, I don't know, like a download button. If you use in the asset store, uh, native gallery and native share, they're both free assets. You can add those super quickly. Um, our screenshot is a texture 2D, I think now, or a texture. You can do like texture dot uh, encode to PNG and then write that to a file. And then that's what you can use to, um, with like native share or you can use it with the native gallery button. So yeah, hopefully this helps you guys out.